Good morning, everybody. I am about two months into my family medicine residency. I wanted to give you guys a quick update on how that's going and, you know, just share a little bit of my journey with you guys some more. I had a one month clinical orientation, which was one week of family medicine clinic, one week of inpatient peds, one week of inpatient medicine, and one week of obstetrics. All right, if you all are new to my channel, my name is Aaron. I am a family medicine resident in my intern year. I am currently in Colorado, and the residency program I chose is full scope family medicine, and not a lot of people understand what that means. Full scope basically says that I can do a lot of inpatient hospital medicine, I can do OB, I can do clinic, and I can do a variety of other things, but my focus is gonna be basically on inpatient medicine, obstetrics, and clinic. And then after that, I started my first official rotation, which was two weeks of OB night float, which were 13 hour days, six days a week. And man, that was rough. I learned more in those two weeks than I did, honestly, probably a whole, you know, year of third year in medical school because you are dealing everything as an intern all the back work, you know, admitting people, all the orders, seeing everybody, kind of the face of the team. I got to do about 19 deliveries, which was absolutely beautiful. I got to work on my laceration repair skills. I got to repair about five. Some were really complex, so the chief resident and the attending would kind of do the more complex part, explain it to me, and then let me do the easier portion. That way I can start getting that practice and repetition in. I started really focusing on my suturing skills and I built a quick little, you know, suturing uh, mechanism here at home. If you guys go online, these little boards that you use for suturing are like 50, 60 bucks. So I just went to Walmart. I found this like little plank thing. I put some hooks on it and then I bought some just thicker thread just to practice my knots, which has helped a lot. Uh, a lot of people, a lot, I've noticed that they really like to use a lot of two hand knots whenever doing lock repairs. Some do one hand tie knots. So that's kind of what I've been practicing when I'm at home and I have time and you know, just trying to be a better doctor every day. So yeah, it was two weeks of 13 hour shifts for six days a week, I would have one day off and it was rough. Um, it was a lot of work from seeing all the OB triagers to all the deliveries. That was really difficult initially to just manage all these OB triage things, the whole postpartum list, because after you deliver a baby as family medicine and OB, you also take care of the baby. So you take care of the mom and the baby. And it's just a lot. As you guys know, I went to this program because they are one of very few family medicine programs in the country that offer a surgical track within three years. As a first year, you don't really go into the OR pretty much at all. Your main focus is getting good at those vaginal deliveries. And then your second and third year, you kind of get that privilege to be in the OR and assist and primary those c-sections which i think is a really cool method to you know just have one focus and just focus on that and then you can start you know leveling up as you become a second year and a chief i have had some really amazing chiefs that i work under you know some are more a type some are more relaxed and it's just cool to see everybody's different style of medicine my attendings are really awesome and then of course all my co-residents have been really fun to hang out with, although the last two weeks I haven't really hung out with them at all because I was just way too tired. I would literally get home at around between, you know, 6 and 8 a.m. I would maybe eat if I was hungry. I would take a shower and then I would just go to bed until 4 p.m. and then be at work again at 4.45. I would generally eat at the hospital midnight. There were a few nights where I missed food all entirely because I was in a really long delivery or triage was blowing up or you know whatever reason was happening sometimes you just did not have time and that's okay uh, i didn't really feel hungry those days i did start developing some pretty bad headaches about um you know 
three or four days into my first week of OB nights. And I don't know if it's one because I was drinking too much coffee and I was dehydrated or just the absolute stress of... So right now I'm about to start my ortho rotation, which should be a much less demanding rotation. I have a few goals for this rotation. I want to really learn how to do, you know, some joint injections, identify just common musculoskeletal issues that I can deal with in a primary care office. I would love to learn how to do splinting and casting. So these are just a few of the things that I'm like thinking about as I go into this rotation of what I really want to work on. And I encourage you guys to really think about what are your goals for each rotation you're in. As a medical student, you kind of just have to be interested in everything and take in everything. Uh, now as a resident, I feel like I can be a lot more focused on I really want to learn this for my future practice and it's amazing. Residency is a million times harder than medical school. I do want to let you guys know that. Uh, the hours <laughs> this last two weeks on OB night float was the most I worked in you know a week or two period. Uh, I didn't think it was gonna be this hard because you guys know like I grew up on a farm I was like this is not gonna be anything harder than I ever did on a farm and it was absolutely harder than anything I ever worked with. Physical labor is demanding in its own ways but the mental uh, toll of making sure you're providing the best care for your patient that you are just trying to do your best to um, learn how to manage these complicated obstetric patients um, and show that you know what you can do and being okay with being wrong a lot, uh, managing a lot of interpersonal relationships between your chief, uh, the nurses, the charge nurse, your patients, the, attend the different attendings uh, is a lot. And on, on that whole attending note, we have OBGYN attendings that we sometimes work with and they have been nothing but amazing to me as a family medicine resident, you know. In other places that I went, I felt like OBGYNs were not as open to family medicine doing obstetrics. Here they absolutely are and here they love to teach and I can't thank them enough. You know, I've had OB attendings walk me through how to do like bedside ultrasound, bedside AFIs, um, walking me through deliveries the way that they do it and then being this is how I do it it's not what they're gonna teach you there so kind of you know what what you want to do with your practice and I definitely want to adopt some of the maneuvers that they do and some of the maneuvers that my FMOB doctors do so kind of the update that's where I'm at uh, I am gonna go to ortho clinic and I'll see you guys in the next video.